Have you ever had that unsettling feeling like something is off? Maybe it is an energy in your home or a strange vibe at work. Let's be honest, the world can be a chaotic place. But if I told you there is a way to shield yourself from all that negativity. Hello everyone, my name is Laurie Grave and this is Whispering Witchcraft. And today we are going to level up our protection magic. We are going to explore both the basics and some more advanced practice. And by the time we are done, you will have a whole arsenal of techniques to keep yourself and your space protected. Protection magic is not about being paranoid, it's about being prepared. Just like you wouldn't drive without a seatbelt, why face the world without a little bit of magic? But before we start, I would like to say this is my approach to this subject, based on my own experience. There are many ways to practice, so feel free to explore and find what resonates with you. What is protection magic and why do we need it? At its core, protection magic is exactly what it sounds like. Creating a protective energy or shield around a person, a situation, an item, or a space. Think about it. Every day, we encounter all sorts of energy. Maybe it is that person that gives a dirty look in the traffic, or a tough day at work, that just stick with you like blue. Also, as we start working with energy or engage in spiritual practice, we open ourselves to unwanted energies, entities, and even other practitioners who may not have our best interest at heart. Every day we lock doors, we wear helmets when we ride bikes, and use safe belts while driving cars. So protection magic is a spiritual equivalent. It's about making sure that you are covered, just in case. Protection could be a daily practice, or it can be done in a certain period of the year. Perhaps it can also use a combination of passive and active spells to make sure that your protection is all around the whole year. There is no rules for that. It will depend on your own necessity and how your personal life works. I will break this down into sections. Daily practice and full-on works. And then you will be able to see what fits you better. But before we get into it, there is an important thing to remember. Always cleanse and banish negative energy first. Otherwise, you are just building something over a bad foundation. And that is definitely not what we want. First, I will start with practice that you can do daily. My first pick will be sigils. Sigils are customizable symbols that normally we see draw on papers or carved on candles. But here's the thing. It is possible to draw them on your skin with pens or markers or even incorporate into your daily routine through sunscreen, foundation or lotion. You can be very creative with sigils. Some people like to incorporate them also in their clothes, sewing the symbol in the inside of shorts or jackets. Some people also use them as a protection screen on their phones. There is a lot of possibilities with sigils. You can also choose to have charms, amulets, or talismans. They are not just for looks. These items can be charged with protective energy and can be worn to keep negative vibes at bay. Wearing protective jewelry is a common practice in many cultures, and it is a very good way to carry your personal protection spells with you right under everybody's eyes. Talismans such as evil eye charms, garlic stands, wind chimes, or sigil market rocks can be also placed around the home to deflect negative energy. Also, some stones are also known for their protective properties. Black tourmaline or obsidian are my goats too. Keep them in your pocket, your desk, or by your bed to create a protective barrier wherever you are. Sprinkling protective powders over doors or trash holes prevents unwanted energy from entering, and it is a very fast and easy way to keep negative energies outside of your own space. Another way, and this one is a bit different, but hear me out, is blessing your food and drinks with protective energy. It is like fortifying yourself from the inside out, whether it's your morning coffee or a simple meal. Take a moment to charge with your intention before you consume it. Now, moving to something a little bit different, 
there is this very famous daily practice and it's called the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, also known as LBRP. This is a classic in the world of protection magic. It is a banishing ceremonial ritual that is straightforward but super effective. It is a great way to clear your space and you yourself of any lingering negative energy. I have done it in the past, but it doesn't really resonate with me, but it may be something that you find interesting and want to try it, so why not? Last but not least, meditation. Meditation is a staple in any practitioner's life, requiring no tools and it can be done at any moment of need. Meditation is not just for clearing your mind, it is also a powerful way to build up our protective energy. Imagine yourself surrounded by a shield of light, or ask your guides, ancestors, or deities to watch over you throughout the day. If you have problems meditating, I recommend you to watch the episode on this channel that I talk about grounding, centering, and directing your energy that can be very helpful for you when you struggle with this meditation part of the practice. If you're ready to take things up a notch, here are some more works that offer a longer lasting protection. Because if you can also go full on, why not? So first, I would like to talk a little bit about washes. Floor washes, door washes, window washes are very common in folk magic. This typically involves mixing protective herbs into a solution, use it to clean and protect a space. How I do that? Very practical items will be used here, as you would expect from folk magic work. So, a bucket, water, and a mop or cloth will be the magical instruments here. You can also have some kind of special water, like moon water, rain water, or you can also use direct from the tap. For the mixing on the water, I usually use a red self-made tincture with different cleansing and protective herbs combo, but you can use a fresh herbs as well. For fresh herbs, I would boil a bit of the water first and add the herbs and let them chill. It's like doing a big buck of tea. <laughs> then after I would pour this water into a bucket and fill it with more water if necessary. Some People do the herbal washes and then after they mop again with clear water, I don't do that. I just leave it as it is. In the same direction, we have the bath. As the house washes, this helps to create this coat of protective energy. But instead of coating your house or your space, it is putting this layer over yourself. And it can be done in the same making tea concept. but. I would put the herbs inside of a cloth before putting them in a bathtub, just to avoid damaging the drains. Nobody wants that. And if you don't have a bathtub, that's not a problem. You can also put in a jar and let it wash yourself. Actually, I really like this technique with a jar. It's like a waterfall cleans ritual and brings me some childhood memories, like this jar with water full with rue, salt, and a new azul. And then my mother would say some curandera words and that would be the wash it. So I really recommend, even if you don't have a bathtub, this waterfall cleansing is amazing. You can feel like this coming from top of your head and like literally putting everything away and going down to the drain. I really recommend this if you're feeling like very heavy and you want to get rid of everything. But also, there is an important thing to think before you preparing the herbs for your bath. Be aware of putting herbs that do not cause any dangers in contact with the skin. Remember, you will be naked soaking in this water, so be careful when choosing the herbs for it. Make your research and be sure that this will not be dangerous for you. The next point for me then would be wards. There is a lot of different words that you can do it, but here I will share some of those that I really like it and for me they work very well. So first, starting simple is uh, with plant words. Plants can act as protectors, absorbing negative energy. Any plant can work as a natural protector, but you can also give this job to a specific plant. 
you can research a plant that has this natural protective energy and then you give her the job of protecting your house. So if your plants suddenly start to look unhealthy, it might be time to do some divination or some additional cleaning in the house. The next layer, it will be contingency spells. These also are wards, but they work essentially as if-them spells. They are designed to activate automatically under specific conditions. The term tripwire spell fits perfectly and describes how these spells act because they have this automatic trigger on them. And they are ready to activate when specific conditions are met. It is like setting up a magical tripwire to catch any issues before they escalate. But this is a big topic and I will be talking more deeply in a future episode. The next one, I would like to talk about charm bags. These are small bags filled with protective herbs and these you can place behind doors, under beds, or carrying with you. They need regular upkeep, but they provide ongoing protections. And how can I not talk about witch bottles? Traditional witch bottles are filled with sharp objects like thorns, needle, or glass, along with protective herbs, and sometimes urine, yes, pee. And they are buried near to the home entrance. For me, I use in a different way. I really like to set wards bottles in a visible space where I can check them every now and then. So I know if they need more energy or they need to be totally replaced. A very easy one is fill a jar with water, add some ashes. Normally I would make a sigil and activate with fire. Then I use the ashes on this bottle and then I add a black charcoal. When the charcoal is not floating anymore, it is time to renew the ward. So this is a very easy one to do it, and it's also very easy to know when it is time to replace it. When it comes to protection magic, it's all about layers. Don't rely on just one method. Think about covering yourself as an individual in your space with protections for a strong defense. And remember, it is always better to practice preventive magic than scramble for solutions when something goes wrong. Protection magic is an essential part of any spiritual practice and it ensures that you are safeguarded from negative influence while you are doing your work. Take the time to build up your protective measures and make them a consistent part of your life. If you found these tips helpful, you can find a blog post version of this episode and even more at liminalrights.da. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And as always, I would love to hear how you incorporate protection magic in your routine. So leave a comment and let's talk about it. Until next time, my name is Laurie Graves and this was Whispering Witchcraft.